What a hunt. Truly blessed. Hey folks, welcome to this episode. So today I thought I'd take you through a little bit. I just picked up my new carry-on uh, utility trailer. This is what I'm gonna be using now for the next several years to haul the Polaris ATV around along with the, all the equipment we use to do <clears throat> our food plots and you know doing some hunts and things like that. So um, I went with a, a five and a half by 10 foot trailer. Uh, it's got 15 inch tires on it so it's a little bit more sturdier it's got the Venos two inch ball on it um, picked up the new Rhino USA uh, adjustable uh, receiver with a two inch and a two and five sixteenths inch on it in case I need that <clears throat> we'll show that to you I did an unboxing um, short the other day on our on our YouTube channel here I went ahead and picked up a spare tire because it's always good to have those so I already got the spare tire mounted on it with the uh, carry-on trailer universal mount it was really simple to put on the front rail here i do have a spare tire cover ordered for this that will put over to protect it from uh, the weather and the sun so it doesn't uh, dry rot and i do have some hitch ball covers that we're going to be uh, getting as well uh, another thing that i have uh, gotten for the trailer and for the ball and that is obviously some dielectric grease um, to help with keeping the lubrication on the ball so it doesn't uh, create too much unnecessary friction when we're utilizing it and it keeps it from rusting and stuff like that. So that's always something good to have, really inexpensive. And also dielectric grease on your electrical attachments. This is a four prong uh, flat <clears throat> attachment. So a little dielectric grease on the prongs after you clean them. It helps not only give it a good uh, seal, it weatherproofs it and it helps with the contact so your lighting always works on your trailers. Um, so I'll show those things to you in the video here. Uh, what I picked up, really simple, you can get them at a Lowe's, Amazon, Tractor Supply, anywhere like that, they sell all of that stuff, really inexpensive. Um, what I'm gonna do today <clears throat> is, I'm waiting on some more things to come, but I picked up some Amble, uh, it's a four pack of uh, trailer tie down D-rings that I'm gonna install in the back part of the deck uh, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the ATV sitting up here on the front. I've got some Rhino USA <clears throat> uh, tire tie downs that we're gonna put in here that I'm waiting for those to come in. Uh, and we'll show you the install of that once I get those. But uh, these D-rings are gonna sit flush to the top of uh, the wood. So we're gonna install those. And this way, you know, as I put the the, a, the disc that we're gonna be using to do our food plots or anything else on the back of the trailer that I need to tie down or even secure the back part of the quad, we're gonna have four tie downs, two on each side for right now. And I may add some more to the trailer uh, down the road to once I see what my needs are gonna be. Um, but we're gonna try and install those today and, uh, and take you through this at least with one of them to show you how it is. Hopefully it's not too hard, come on along. This segment is brought to you by Altera Alpaca Socks. Bison coolers, buck cage, cage your next buck, Dusty W German short haired pointers, and killer food plots. You reap what you sow. All right, guys, so as you can see, um, the box, just like the Rhino, <clears throat> is laser cut. So you had two D rings and and plates in this side too here and it had all the bolts and nuts that you're going to need right in the box. So great packaging from Amble here. Uh, we're going to give them a try and see how it works out. So let's get to it. I'm going to move the box off to the side. So the first thing we got to do is figure out where we want to uh, position our tie downs. And I'm thinking I'm going to want one back here and probably one position somewhere up here. The back of the ATV is gonna be right about this point right here. So I wanna be able to have tie downs that we can get to stuff. And it may, I've got a support bracket here and a support bracket here. So we may go right here and actually right here. Now I did watch some videos and some people said um, to take your base plate when you're doing this and kind of straddle the two boards so you're not taking as much surface out of your, your two by eights <clears throat> when you're putting them in. So 
that may be something I'm going to consider here. This way it kind of offsets it a little bit more to the side. We don't have to worry about hitting any of the uh, angle iron or whatnot there. So I think we're going to work to do that. And I think what we'll do is we'll position the two of them on this side, right in this area here. Um, so I have two tie downs on each, on, on each side that we can tie secure uh, the, the disc or anything else that we need to secure back here and we'll have everything up front for the ATV there. So let me see what I can do here. I think what we'll do is we'll mark this one at seven inches and we'll mark this one right around twenty six and a half there. <clears throat> And then we'll just square this off with the edge of our trailer. I think what we'll do I think from the edge of the trailer will come the five and a half inches. And the same thing over here, we'll go five and a half inches. All right, <clears throat> so I've got this side measured off. I'm gonna go ahead and measure the other side so this way it's done and then all we can just go do is just go and, uh, and drill from there. This segment is brought to you by Raptor Razor Knives. Vortex Optics. Scrape Fix. Tacticam, share your hunt and reveal cellular cameras by Tacticam. All right, so I've got the uh, two sections measured up. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna lay the plates down in here, how I want them. And I'm going to trace out the circle as well as the areas that I'm going to cut in for the bolts. <clears throat> okay, and the one thing you want to keep in mind is you want to have your D-rings so when they come up, the tension is pulling the way they're facing or off to the sides. You don't want to have that tension. You don't want to install them like this and have that tension pulling that way. So when they 
When they come up, we're going to be sitting like this. They're going to be going like that. So we're just going to lay them like that so I know how I need them. And we'll measure this one here. All right. <clears throat> so now we're ready to make our first drills right in these areas here. All right. So the other thing I saw is everybody said drill your, your holes first and then drill this one last so you're not losing any surface area or splitting when you're drilling for your carriage bolts. So we're gonna do that first and try and stay as straight as we can. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we've got those drilled. Okay, that was a little bit trickier than I thought it would be, but we got it. Okay, all right, since I don't have a rubber mallet, I'm just gonna All right, so you can see we've got those tapped down in. There's a little bit of a little bit of a snug fit there, but they're in. So now I'm gonna go underneath and secure the bottom plate. Now we got it. All right. Okay, let's try and get this one in first. So I hope uh, this helped you a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and finish putting the other three uh, plates in with the D-rings and get them secure. Now that I got an idea of what I need to do is a little bit tough. Um, I will say the recommendation that I saw on YouTube with going between uh, the pieces of wood to not take as much surface area out is good, but you just got to be careful because it wants to pull that whole, that whole saw blade um, away from where you got to be and then you're going to need a hammer or a rubber mallet. I didn't have a rubber mallet. I should have had one. So I just used a kneeling pad so I didn't damage the tops of uh, the carriage bolts. But uh, all in all, it seems like it's really secure. It's going to work well for my needs and uh, I'll show you the finished product when it's all done. All right, folks. Well, here's the finished product. Uh, I think it came out okay. 
had a couple of hiccups, uh, you know, with drilling into the wood, and, and I think that just takes some time. You just got to take your time and be careful with it. Had to uh, just make some adjustments uh, with the, the holes for the, the bolts. But all in all, I think it came out great. We've got them lined up perfect in the back of the trailer where I wanted them here. And we're waiting on the Rhino tie-down straps for the ATV front tires to come in. And I'll go through the install on those in the trailer and show you how that all works out. And just kind of keep it going as we uh, get more things. Waiting for a tire cover to come in for the spare tire here. And uh, waiting for ratchet straps from Rhino USA for back here as well. So guys... I hope this helped you. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. And uh, I'm going to get cleaned up and uh, maybe go to the gym and get a little workout in after all of this. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks.